basic philosophy is that we want to make sure that playing the game is the most fun, the most rewarding way to get items. The way we're guaranteeing that is by focusing on making sure that we are dropping less but better and more epic loot overall. We really want to make sure that we're not constantly filling up your bags with items you don't care about. Then we do find an item you care about that it actually has a meaningful change to your, to your character. We want to make sure that our legendaries are as build changing as we can make them. So I'm going to talk about some of the systems that are going to allow us to really deliver on the promise of Loot 2.0. And the first one is smart drops. So what are smart drops? Every time an item drops, there's a chance that we're going to tweak its, its stats, its affixes, so they're tailored made for the class that you're currently playing. So if I was playing a demon hunter and this quiver dropped for me, you're going to see already that I've got a really good dexterity boost, good vitality, but more importantly, if you look at the legendary affixes, the ones in yellow, those are really the ones that we're talking about making the legendaries as, as awesome and as epic as we can make them. But before I really get into more of our legendaries, I just want to quickly sh show you guys a comparison between where loot is right now in Diablo 3 and what you guys can, can expect come Reaper of Souls. So if you're going to take a normal playthrough of Act 3 with a Paragon level 40 character, this is the quantity of loot that is currently dropping in Diablo 3. So that player found 256 common items, 399 blue items, 275 yellow items, and one legendary. So there is hope that one of these items was, was good for you. So now let's fast forward and let's take that exact same playthrough of VAC 3, but bring it into Reaper Souls and show you some of our early results from our experiments with Loot 2.0. First thing, 73 whites. Drastic reduction from what you saw in Diablo 3. But more importantly, we're making these useful because we're introducing a new crafting reagent around common items. So there'll be a reason for you to pick them up. Blue items get a reduction as well. They're still important that you find a lot of these because these are the items that you're going to be using for reagents. But we're also introducing transmog, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But the real important change is when it comes to the rare or the yellow items. Big change from 275 to 83. The thing to keep in mind is that every single one of those items, those 83, is a chance to be a smart drop item. That means that we're increasing the chances of you finding a side grade or an upgrade. And finally, what about those legendaries? In that playthrough of Act 3, we found six legendary items. It doesn't mean that we're throwing out legendaries like it's, they're going out of uh, you know, fashion. The thing is, there's still going to be those really rare legendaries that players are going to want to hunt for. But we want to make sure that players are seeing legendaries more often, and they're really trying to deliver on the promise of making those legendaries build changers. So let's take a quick look at some of the legendaries that dropped during this play, uh, playthrough. So here we have the puzzle ring. There's two versions. The version that is currently dropping in Diablo 3, and the version that will be dropping in Reaper of Souls. The thing you'll notice right away is that the Reaper of Souls version is actually rolling up to level 70. One of the changes we're making is making sure that all the legendaries can roll at all levels. But the most important change is if you look at the legendary affix. If you equip this ring, you're going to summon a treasure goblin. And what is that treasure goblin going to do? Every time there's items on the ground, if you're killing all the monsters in Diablo, there's a chance that that treasure goblin will drop a rare or legendary item for you. It's a great example of how we're trying to make our items, our legendary items, interesting. But how we make them build changers? Let's take a look at a wizard-specific legendary. Here we have the Serpent's Sparker. And what's cool about the Serpent's Sparker is it's built around the Hydra skill. One of my favorite skills when it comes to playing a wizard, and this, the effect here is that every single time you kill a monster, there's a chance it's going to summon a Hydra. So if one Hydra was cool, could you imagine a battlefield of Hydras just laying waste to all the monsters? Good example of how we want to make our legendaries build changers. And finally, a monk legendary. This one's really built around Dashing Strike. So here you notice that if, you, if Dashing Strike hits an enemy that is you know, more than 25 yards away, it's essentially a free skill. Again, a really good example of how we want players to be using these legendaries that they're finding more often to really build their characters around these great items. But we're not just making changes to the low-level item gameplay by dropping less, better, or more epic items. We are also introducing a new artisan 
to Diablo 3 and Reaper of Souls, the mystic. Now, what can the mystic do for you? Two fantastic things. The first one is transmogrify, which means that you no longer have to sacrifice uh, your visuals of how your character looks for power. So you have a very particular look of the, what, how you want your character to look. You can go to the, to the mystic and you can essentially choose any of the appearances of any of the items that you picked up in the game and in you know, a small gold cost, swap that appearance for the one you really want. But the really exciting change for the mystic is enchanting. And what can you do with enchanting? Enchanting allows you to, to re-roll a single affix in any rare or legendary item. So if you have, for example, you have a, an item with intelligence on it and you want something different, you go see the mystic and there's a chance that you might get the, the affix you really want to make that item exactly what you want. But again, we're not just stopping at loot. We're also rethinking our end game. And one of our big driving goals is make sure we have an end game for everyone. Whether you've played 100 or 1,200 hours of Diablo or you just finished uh, or just killed Diablo once, we want to make sure there's something for everyone after they finish playing the story. The first thing players are going to encounter is with a new level cap of 70, every class in the game is getting new toys to play with in the shape of skills, runes, and passives. But the really exciting change that we're adding is a brand new way of playing Diablo 3, and that is what we're calling loot runs. What's a loot run? Well, it's a 15 to 20 minute dungeon, multi-tiered dungeon, where we fully randomize the environments, we fully randomize the monsters, the weather, and most importantly, the boss at the end that you can need to defeat if you want to walk out of the dungeon with all the loot. So here's some simple screenshots of some of the loot runs. Here we have the cathedral with uh, different lighting conditions and different monsters. Same here for the oasis. And here I have uh, some of Zoltan Kuhl's archives. And again, we're really leveraging the full randomization that's at the heart of Diablo and making sure that there's an interesting and a very novel new way to not just play, but more importantly, get those legendaries that you, that you want so much. And finally, last thing I want to talk to you guys is what changes we're making to the Paragon system. There are three big changes. The first one is that it's no longer, it, it is now account-wide. So as long as you have one character at max level, all your characters will get to benefit from, from Paragon. The other thing we're changing, there's no longer a ceiling. There's no cap. So if you want to be Paragon 100, 200, 300, 400, 1200, as long as you want to keep playing, you're going to be gaining, gaining Paragon levels and more importantly, Paragon points. So for the first time in D3, we're going to give you, the players, the feature you guys wanted from the beginning, it's a way to fully customize your character. So every time you gain a Paragon level, you'll be able to spend a Paragon point on any of your characters to either increase your core stats, your offensive stats, your defensive stats, or your venturing stats. And this will allow you to tweak and tune your Barbarian, your Crusader, your Demon Hunter, exactly how you want them to be.